What is the secret to work-life balance for parents? Is it technology? I hope so. Uh, joining us to help maybe answer that question is Manoush Zamarodi from the Note to Self podcast. Welcome back, Manoush. Megan, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So last time we talked, uh, you had the Board and Brilliant Project, which yes. was amazing. Uh, you taught people, you went through little lessons every day of ways for people to put down their smartphones and maybe come up with amazing ideas. Uh, I did the project. You replayed it um, this this past month, I, I assume, in order to prepare for the, the project that we're going to talk about. Um, and it was funny. I listened to it again because I needed it, it again. It was a boot camp version. Like, we, you know, it's it's hard to take a full week to do one of these interactive projects when you don't have the full week um, then you can do the boot camp version I feel like we all need the boot camp version of everything these days and so why not do that for uh, for figuring out how to use your technology purposefully as well so yeah I'm glad to hear you did it <laughs> I did I did it did it twice uh, hopefully this time it'll take <laughs> well let's talk about your your new project uh, which is a four-part series on note to self uh, as we're recording this we're only in part three uh, you left yeah. me hanging, so I, I don't know what happens in part four. Uh, but it's called Taking the Lead, uh, and it's about two women who are trying to solve the problem that uh, so many working parents have uh, with trying to balance their work and their life and have uh, just be able to uh, do the impossible, which is have a successful, busy job and also raise children. Talk a little bit about the project. Yeah, so these are actually two moms, uh, Brooklyn moms, and I started talking to them about two years ago, and they had orig originally started as like a think tank, you know, how can we do this, how can we deal with all these smart moms that we see in the neighborhood who drop out of work, and when they want to go back, they can't get in at the same level necessarily, and they feel like they can't rise up. Is there something we can do? Well, of course, as they're thinking about all this, the app economy is, you know, happening and taking off. And so they come up with this idea for a sort of digital service, a platform um, that supports parents. Um, it went through various iterations, but the, the final version that they landed on was sort of like a task rabbit but for a trusted network. So you would be uh, hooked up with your friends and in your networks, babysitters and other support staff. Uh, and so, you know, if you, if you have to stay late at the office because a client call goes long, you have a backup, um, as opposed to a lot of people who are truly scrambling. Sure, they're on the call with the client, but they're also crazy on their phone trying to get their babysitter to stay late or see if a, if a friend can do it or, or get that other babysitter who they haven't talked to in six months. So the idea was to sort of create this network. And I really thought, Megan, oh, this will be interesting to see how work, these busy working moms become entrepreneurs, what it's like for two people who have no tech background to go to Silicon Valley, drive around Palo Alto, and really, you know, get their fingers dirty, hands dirty in this. But really, over the two years that I followed them, it also became much more of a, a deep sort of archetypal story. One of the women has a stay-at-home a uh, husband, he take, he's the lead parent, as we now call it, and she is ready to do it like the bros do it out in San Francisco. The other, though, she is the family's main caretaker, and she feels deeply ambivalent that, of course, in startup culture, you have to be 110%. And so her kid is saying to her mom, you never want to be with me. I never see you. And she's feeling completely torn. And so we really see how the tech economy is very different, difficult to reconcile with uh, some of the, the ambivalence, the dilemmas that um, professional uh, moms face. And some of the moments you capture, I think, are really universal for for those of us, it's, it's particular moms, I think, um, in this instance, because I'm talking about mom guilt, uh, you make one point where she talks about, you know, not being able to pick up her kids from school. And there's that yeah. question of, like, do we really want to pick up our kids at school or do we really feel like that's our job? Right. Like, it's our responsibility and then we feel guilty not doing it. I mean, I definitely personally went through that when I came back here, which was the full time as opposed to the freelance job I did for the decade before when my children were born. And it's like, I had to think, well, yeah, you know what? I've picked up my kids for, uh, you know, for, for until they're, they were in fifth and, uh, and seventh grade. And you know, that, I'm good. <laughs> Someone else can do right. it. You're in the next chapter. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And it's interesting to me that like with so many jobs now, uh, you know, I'm on Skype with you, like technology is making it possible for us to work in very different ways, to work remotely, to work flexibly. And yet, 
Uh, if you want to have a tech startup, there's none of that. You are all in or you're not in at all. And so it's going to be interesting, I think, uh, as we see somebody like Mark Zuckerberg take a paternity leave, how the sort of culture potentially changes as we go forward and uh, and people make more demands and dads make more demands, right? That it's not just the mom guilt, but, you know, I see my husband who, you know, he's had to work a lot this week and he misses seeing our kids. And so when it becomes sort of more culturally acceptable, the dads also have um, more flexibility at work. And it's not assumed that it's mom who's doing the pickup all the time, then maybe we can get to this sort of equilibrium. But of course, in the tech world, you know, where only I believe it's 6% of all app developers are women, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult uh, nut to crack. Yeah, I mean, the episode where they do go to Silicon Valley is fascinating, and I'm a huge fan of the HBO show, Silicon Valley, and it made me think that there, I mean, there are so few women characters in there already, but, like, there's not a single mom in that entire show. That's funny that you say that, because when Marissa Meyer was um, appointed CEO of Yahoo, I wrote an op-ed that was saying, like, oh, my gosh, what an opportunity for this woman, she's pregnant, to, sh to set an example of how it can be done, to say, um, potentially, I can be a CEO, but I can also create boundaries. And actually, that's not at all what she did, right? She was like, no problem. I've got the nursery next door. I've got a total staff. I'll be out for two days, done. And 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 still here we are, and the company hasn't succeeded. So I, I almost, I had wished that she would show that there was another way to do this, um, but maybe that, you know, the culture wasn't there yet. She wouldn't have been accepted. Uh what what let's talk about need done uh, that's yeah. the app that they right. uh, that they were working on um and I, I don't want you to give any spoilers or anything, but so they, they go to this uh, app accelerator program, sort yes. of, you know, uh, I keep wanting to bring up Silicon Valley, but it's kind of like the same sort of situation, except it's in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Of all um, places, yep. <laughs> and, and talk a little bit about what happened there, because it's really fascinating uh, how they approached uh, the, their final presentation. So it's very interesting to me that all these sort of smaller, former um, industrial cities now across the United States are taking a page out of Silicon Valley's book and starting these accelerators in the hopes of bringing more tech entrepreneurs to their, you know, really struggling economies. And so Springfield, Massachusetts has one called Valley Venture Mentors, where the idea is to incubate, mentor, and kickstart uh, entrepreneurs who will hopefully then set up their companies in Springfield, revitalize the economy. And so these two women, you know, they couldn't find anything that worked with their schedules here in New York, ironically. So they now drive up every weekend to go to Springfield, Massachusetts, three hours on the train or driving, and um, and really sort of do this boot camp um, of, of trying to learn how to become entrepreneurs. And, you know, they do what they do at every single one of these accelerator places, right? You practice your pitch. You figure out what is your valuation. What is your, um, what's the value that you're bringing to customers? How do you explain the pain point? Well, it definitely is tricky. Um, and I highly recommend that people uh, download Taking the Lead and subscribe to the Note to Solve podcast. Uh, in you, We didn't talk about your experience with Need Done, so we'll save that for people to listen. Well, before I let you go, Tell a little, tell people a little bit about what um, Note to Self is when you're not doing four part yes. series like this. Yes. Okay. So we are a podcast. We come from WNYC Studios, which is where I'm sitting right now here in New York City. It's New York Public Radio. Uh, we're a podcast. I mean, we call it a tech show, but it's really uh, a tech show about being human. So it's about how technology is changing the way we uh, work, the way that we meet uh, special people in our lives, the way that we parent, the way that we sort of really construct um, how we use our time every single day. And so we like to have personal stories and, and we like to think sort of more deeply and critically about what all this wonderful technology means for our attention spans and, and for our emotions. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, anyone can uh, find Note to Self Radio. It's noteselfradio.org or um, wherever fine podcasts are given away yes. free. <laughs> iTunes, all those things, exactly. <laughs> thank you so much, Manoush. Oh, Megan, it was such a pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Take care.